Okay guys, we're back with another video here. Uh, this is on multiplication of numbers in exponential form. So your note packet, that's exactly what it should say across the top. And here's the first four examples right out of uh, your note packet. And this is super duper easy, okay? Uh, the other day we talked about exponential form. And that is what you have right here. Uh, just as a little reminder, you have your base. All right, that is the 14 here and the 14 here. And then you have your exponent. That is the 23 and the 8 right there. And basically, we want to know how we can multiply these two together. Now, what has to happen is these two bases have to be the same if we're going to multiply these together. All right, so if you notice in all the examples, uh, except for number five, we have that. So we'll talk about that one in a bit. Uh, but as long as these two bases are the same, then here's all we do is we keep that base the same and we add these two exponents. All right, so 23 and 8 gives me 31. And that's my answer. All right, so that, that's as easy as it is right there. Uh, same base has to happen. And when you multiply things of the same bases, or numbers of the same bases, uh, you just add the exponents. So 23 and 8 gives me a 31. All right? Uh, exercise 2, notice we still have the same base. Now, they're not numbers, but that's okay. All right? We have to get used to using variables, uh, not interchangeably, but similar um, to numbers. So this is an A and this is an A. It's the same base. So if I go to multiply them, uh, another thing we have to get used to is this little dot. This is the same thing as using a multiplication symbol. You know, we're big boys and girls now and instead of using this X as multiplication, we're going to use a dot because this looks like a variable. It looks like an X. Variable X. So we're going to start using this more and more. Alright, so this is A to the 23rd power times a to the eighth power. Well, it's the same base, so I keep that base, and I simply add the exponents again at 31. All right? So super duper easy. Uh, next two examples, very similar. Uh, you can do it with three numbers. This is 9, 9, and 9. Those are all the same bases. So when I multiply them together, I'm going to get the same base, and I add the exponents. 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 13 more is going to give me 23 and I'm all done. That's it. Alright, and uh, let's see about this one. Um, again, same base, right? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I'm multiplying the same bases and I'm adding the exponents. So that's 8. 8 and 7 is 15. 15 plus 9 I get 24. All right. So okay, let's try the next four examples. These are a little different, so I put it on a different page here. And let's just take each one at a time. Uh, this one, let me switch to my red pen. Uh, we've got the same base. And, oh, look, they already have an equals in there for us. N equals the same base. So looks like they want us to find what X is equal to. Well, same base. I add the exponents. They have to equal four. Well, nine plus what? This is just a variable. It's just taking place of a number. Nine plus what would have to equal 14? Well, that would have to be nine plus something equals 14. Well, the only thing I can put in there is a five. That's the only thing that would work. So in this case, x would have to equal to five to make this all true. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. All right, um, let's look at the next one here. Now they want me to take these four numbers and multiply them together. And if you remember, we can only multiply common bases when they have exponents up here. So this one and this one, they have a common base of negative 4. So I can take negative 4 raised to the second power times negative 4 raised to the third power and get negative 4. Well, I add the exponents. 2 and 3 is a 5. So I've taken care of that, and I've taken care of that. And this one right here and this one right here have the same base. So I can multiply those together. I'm still going to have multiplication in between these two parts. So 17 raised to the fifth times 17 raised to the fifth is going to be 17 
raised to the 12th. Now these two do not have the same base, so I'm all done. That's my answer right here. I'm all done. Just leave it like that. Okay? All right. Pretty straightforward again. All right. Let's take a look at this one now. Some of you guys may be saying, well, wait a minute. There's no operation in here. When I have two things that have parentheses around them, and there's nothing in between there, that means there's a multiplication. I can even put a little dot right there. All right? They are being multiplied together. Okay, so I do the same thing. I multiply the common bases together. And you guys may say, wait a minute, that's a 2x and that's a 17x. However, because of where the parentheses are, this 3 is being associated with that x. So the 2 is not being raised to the third power, just the x's. Same thing over here. 17 is not being raised to the seventh power, just the x. Okay? It would be different, or I'll, I'll put it down here, if it looked like this, let me write it a different way. If I go like this, put the parentheses there and put the three. Now, that means everything in parentheses is being raised to the third power. Okay? It really would be like that. But that's not what we have. We don't have that. We just have this x being the only one to the third power and this x being to the seventh power. So, here's what I do. I multiply these numbers, the 2 and the 17, like normal. 2 times 17 is 34. Alright? This x and this x are the same base. So, x times x is going to give me x to the tenth because they have different exponents here. I add the exponents again. All right. So again, I multiplied these two because they're just regular little numbers. 2 times 17 is 34. x to the third times x to the seventh is x to the tenth. All right. Easy enough. Okay. And the very last one, and that's all for tonight, is this bad boy right here. What they say in the directions is they want to use the distributive property. If you guys remember, we've used the distributive property before. And uh, we always drew these little arrows in here. So B times an A, well, those are totally different, different items. They're different variables. So I don't want to say it's 2BA or BA squared or AB to the fourth or what have you. You simply put them together. I'm taking B times A. Now, usually you write, when you put them together, you you write the uh, the you go in alphabetical order, all right. So A comes first before B, and really there's a little multiplication symbol right in between there, but we don't have to write it there. It means the same thing if we don't, all right. So this part right here gave us that, all right. Oh, there's a plus sign, so I better keep that there. And B times B. Now that's B to the first. If there's no exponent there, that means there's a little one there, times b to the first, okay? And those are the same base, so I get the same base, and I add the exponents, just like I did before. And there is my answer. All right, okay, uh, let's try the items on the next page. This is a little different. Before, we were doing multiplying with the same base. Now, we're doing dividing with the same base and guess what it kind of is uh, it comes natural here if you multiply with the same base you add the exponents while if you divide with the same base you then subtract all right so think about it 7 to the ninth divided by 7 to the 6 I've got the same base well same base but subtract the exponents 7 to the third it's that easy all right Next one, this is exercise 9 on your paper. 8 over 5 raised to the ninth divided by 8 over 5 raised to the second. Well, they've got the same base, and you subtract the exponents. Make sure you put the parentheses in, just like I did. All right? Oh, there's some variables, not even numbers. That's okay. We can do this. We're big boys and girls. A to the 16th divided by A to the 7th equals A to the, what's 16 minus 7? That gives me A to the ninth. All done. Alrighty. 
Uh, two more to go here. Actually, three more to go. Um, t to the fifth divided by t to the fourth. Again, t to the first. And I don't even have to write it like that. I can just write it like t. Because uh, if I don't have that, it, it, I'm assuming that there's a one there. All right? Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, these last two, a little different, so watch what I do here. Okay, we've got 3 to the 23rd divided by 27. And you go, oh, wait, th those aren't the same base. It's got an exponent. It's not the same base. I can't do it. But if I can change one of them to have the same base, then I can do it. So this one I just left the same, 3 to the 3rd or 3 to the 23rd, sorry. And 27 is really 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 to the 3rd. So all I did is I changed the 27 to be 3 to the 3rd. Okay, now it has the same base. Now I can divide them. So 3 to the 23rd divided by 3 to the 3rd is 3 to the 20th. Not too difficult, not too difficult, all right? That's a little different, though. If you got to go back and, and listen to my explanation again, you do it, all right? So one more to go, and that is this one. Uh, I gave this one its own little page because it's, it's a couple steps here, all right? So I have something that's a fraction. 5 divided by x to the third is really a fraction times something that's not. And what we have always done is if we have something that is a fraction times something that isn't a fraction, well, we make both of them fractions. All right? And there's many ways to do this, okay? But if we have a fraction times a fraction, well, let's see. What do we do? Well, usually when you have a fraction times a fraction, you just multiply across. So you could do that in this case. Or, if you're really on the ball, you try to cancel on the diagonals. All right? So let's see if we can cancel on the diagonals here. The 5 and the 1, they're not going to change. All right? But this right here, this is really x times x times x. How many of them? There should be 8 of them, right? If I got eight of them, that's seven of them. I need one more, okay? And this right here, there's three of those. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel the ones that are in common. I'm going to cancel one of those with one of those, one of those with one of those, and one of those with one of those. And then I'm just going to write below here what I'm left over with. I've got, well, gee, all of those canceled. So I really only have one there. Everything cancels to one. And up here, I still have my 3, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's right there. And look, 8 minus 3 is 5, but that's another story altogether. All right? So now it made my job a little easier. 5 times 3 is 15. x to the 5th, well, there really aren't any x's to multiply there, so I just bring it over as x to the 5th over 1. And anything over 1 is just itself. Okay? So, if you have to, again, go back and look at that one again and see the steps that I do. Alright? Because the assignment you do tomorrow, you'll have some just like this. And you just have to write them out and cross out what's in common and cancel and then we just multiply. Alright? So, hopefully that was okay for you. Uh, get it filled in. We'll see you tomorrow. And have a good night.